Hi friends, my name is Frank and I'm greeting you from Clinton in Connecticut. I was born and raised in Germany and I emigrated to the United States. Many migrants think it's easy to emigrate to uh, Germany and spend a lot of money to be taken to Europe and by smugglers. The most common smuggling road is uh, yeah, to Greek island uh, of Lesbos or the Italian island of Lampedusa. From there, most migrants then try to travel on to Germany. Well, this incurs further costs and is risky because the Asylum Act in conjunction with the so-called third uh, country regulation under the Dublin regulation regulates the return of asylum seekers and refugees uh, to safe third countries. The Dublin regulation is an EU uh, regulation that regulates which state is responsible for examining an asylum application or if several EU member uh, states or safe third countries are involved. It's intended to prevent asylum seekers from applying for asylum in several EU countries at the same time and thus overloading the system of asylum procedures. The German um, Asylum Act uh, stipulates that asylum seekers and refugees are enter the Federal Republic of Germany via a safe third country should generally be returned there. So if you want to stay in Germany, you should go there mm, directly without crossing other countries. Very many migrants are told by their smugglers that they should throw away their personal papers in order to disguise um, their age and origin. However, this is not a good idea because firstly, this delays uh, the asylum procedure for many months because it takes a long time to establish one's identity. And secondly, the migrants are then considered stateless and therefore have no right to social benefits. The migrants are often told that in Germany you can get money, an apartment, clothes and much more, but that's not true. Migrants almost always end up in refugee villages that are equipped with tents or containers to live. And there thousands of people have to share six toilets, bathrooms and so on. And that is awful. The hygienic conditions are awful and the people there steal from each other and the atmosphere is so heated that it's not uncommon for fights uh, to break out. Women and children have been often raped and which is very terrible. Instead of money you get either uh, food rations in the canteen or food stamps. You can only get clothes from the used clothing storage. When you have gone through the asylum procedure after many months, which can take up to several years even with a valid identity papers, then there is a chance that you can find accommodation in so-called asylum homes. But don't expect any luxury there either, because uh, most of the time these are outdated buildings that can no longer be rented for, to Germans. So instead of traveling to Europe with a refugee boot, or for example, it's better to officially travel uh, directly to Germany by plane. But you should have enough money in reserve because before you can get support from the state, many months can pass due the bureaucracy. It's therefore advisable to have money available for at least three months. 
An apartment in Germany costs an average of uh, 600 euros per month. In addition, there is a security deposit cost of uh, three months, rent and uh, additional costs uh, such as seating costs, water costs, electricity costs, costs for a caretaker, costs for waste disposal and so on. Germany is the country with the highest electricity and heating costs worldwide. They are also around 300 euro per month. And since the coming ban of uh, oil heating, which makes it necessary to renovate hundreds and thousands uh, of houses, an increase in rent and heating costs can be expected. There are bad times for real estate owners. And then, of course, you still need money yeah, for food, drink and clothing. You should also yeah, plan for three months. Grocery costs are around 70 euros per week if you should, uh, if you shop um, yeah, sparingly. And I'm now orientating myself arithmetically at the lowest end of the scale in order to be able to survive in Germany. So the smallest financial budget to be able to lead a good life in Germany is around um, yeah, about 2000 euros netto per month and I've left out taxes and other levels um, such as radio license fee which is mandatory for every citizen even if you don't own a television at all this adds around 18 uh, euros per month but this is expected uh, to increase to around uh, 25 euros in the future but apart um, from the financial burdens that you can expect as a migrant in Germany, there are other problems. So let's take uh, cultural differences and uh, the narrowness that comes with the population density as an example. According to data from the Federal Statistical Office, uh, Germany had a population of around um, 83.2 million as uh, of December the um, 31, uh, 1st, um, 2021. The total area of Germany is around um, 357.582 uh, square kilometers. According to data from the United States Census Bureau, the population of the United States was approximately uh, 331.4 million in 2020. The total area of the USA is about uh, 9.8 million square kilometers. If you were to transfer the population density of the area of the USA, that would result in a population of about 2.27 billion people. Um, the population density of the USA is about uh, yeah, 33 um, people per square kilometer. This uh, if this density were applied to the area of Germany, the population would be around uh, 11 million roundabout. The population density in Germany is actually about eight times higher than in the USA. So what does it mean now? If you come, um, as an example, from countries like Afghanistan, North Africa or so on, then you will probably not know the feeling of narrowness because this landscape picture is probably um, very familiar to you. Lots of uh, single-family homes with a certain distance from each other that guarantees uh, yeah, privacy and further stretches of land that are undeveloped. In Germany, on the other hand, it usually looks like this. A lot of people live in small space, um, you have a little privacy and you are constantly surrounded by other people who, despite different cultures and religions, have uh, to live together, which represents a great challenge because it's not uncommon for disputes to arise. In 2021, for example, more than 2,777 knife attacks were recorded and in 2022 there were over 3,317 
with the number of unreported cases being much higher. Here in the US, housing developments usually look like this. There are many single-family houses and there are often hundreds of meters of free space between the houses, which considerably reduce the potential uh, of conflict. Of course, things are different in the metropolitan areas. For me, that was also one of the main reasons why I left Germany and moved to the USA. Such small but um, subtle differences uh, mean a lot in terms of the relaxation of the population. While most people in Germany are mostly stressed and irritable, which creates a negative mood where people here in the USA are often more relaxed and almost always have a smile on their lips. And once we address the cultural differences, um, then we have to look at the following example. In Islam, there's, uh, there's a surahs and hadith that make it clear that one should not stare at, each, uh, at other people. For example, in Surah 24, uh, verse um, 30 uh, to 31, Tell the believing man to lower their gaze and keep their chastity. That is pure for them. Verily, Allah is knower uh, of what they do. And tell the believing woman to lower their gaze and guard their modesty and not to openly display their ornaments except what is otherwise uh, visible and they shall fold their handkerchiefs around their bosoms and not to display the ornaments openly. Or in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, it's transmitted, the Prophet, peace and blessing be open on him, um, said, I have forbidden you something, but there is no harm in it. Do not look at other man or woman for an unreasonable amount of time. Germans, on the other hand, often stare at other people, which is not mean to be malicious, but unfortunately is often misunderstood by many migrants. For example, um, they love to sit at a street cafe, have a coffee and yeah, watch people go by while they shop. It's completely normal for Germans to watch each other and uh, they don't find it uh, provocative and women enjoy the freedom of movement, like to dress uh, provo provocative and um, are proud of their physical assets. But however, this should not be misinterpreted by male migrants um, and these women are not easy. Mm, yeah pray for sexual desire. On the contrary, a woman sees themselves as uh, emancipated and enjoy their right to yeah, self-determination. Europeans even find it very strange when they see mm, fully veiled Islamic women because they interpret it as the oppression of Islamic women. The veiling of women can also become a problem in Germany. For example, it's not allowed to wear a headscarf when working in many public offices and a burqa is even forbidden by law because there is a ban of covering up in Germany. For um, identity verification the face uh, must always be free in Germany. Identity cards are always issued with a photo with visible hair. And if a woman refuses to shake, uh, no, if a man refuses to shake uh, hands with a woman for religious reasons, this can also lead to considerable problems. In 2012, for example, a Lebanese was denied German citizenship because he refused to shake hands um, with a responsible clerk for Islamic reasons. The reasoning for the judgment reads 
Anyone who refuses to shake hands with women because of their gender does not fit into the German way of life and therefore cannot be naturalized. And if I may express my personal opinion, I think that is absolutely right. If I were to live in an Islamic country, I would abide uh, by the customs, customs and um, uh, laws there. I wouldn't walk around in shorts and sleeveless uh, shirts. Uh, I wouldn't stare at other women and much more. So, when people from Muslim countries immigrate to Germany, they have to adapt to the customs and laws of their host country and not the other way around. As I said, I am migrant myself who became uh, who came uh, to the USA from Germany and there are also some differences here. For example, while in Germany it's completely normal to drink alcohol on the street in public, it's forbidden here in the USA. So I never occurred to me just because I'm used to drinking alcohol in public here and in the USA at yeah, because of Germany. I'm grateful that I can live here in the USA. I'm grateful to the American people for the fact that I can achieve my life goals here. I respect the constitution and the law and I abide by them. I love the country and the people and without giving up my German roots, I describe myself as an American. I have patriotic feelings and would defend this country because this has now become my home. But if you ask um, most migrants with a German passport what kind of patriot they are, they never say that they are German, but always answer with a country of origin. Even Arabs who have been living in Germany for the second or third generation still refer themselves as Arabs. And anyone who so vehemently rejects German affiliation is, in my opinion, not integrated. The federal states with the larger population of immigrants in Germany are Berlin, Bremen, Northern Westphalia. The crime rate is also the highest there. In the eastern federal states, on the other hand, the proportion of uh, immigrants is uh, comparatively very low. There are also mm, much more rural space sparsely populated and much untouched nature which can look very beautiful in Germany. Most migrants only know Berlin from uh, Germany because uh, because that's where the capital is and yeah and Bavaria. I would not recommend Berlin as a migration destination because the city is a crime hotspot and there are a striking number of African migrants dealing in drugs. The so-called Görlitzer Park in Berlin where hundreds of dealers offer illegal drugs and where the police have already given up criminal prosecution because they can no longer control the mass of dealers, gained notoriously. In the meantime, zones have even been set up there where criminals can go about their business undisturbed. And where there is so much crime, there are often knife attacks. As a reaction to this, Berlin has set up a so-called no-knife zones, <laughs> which is nothing more than a pseudo-security policy. Since, firstly, it cannot be controlled and secondly, nobody sticks to it anyway. It's only intended to give people uh, a feeling of security, but this has no effect. Migrants who are thinking of emigrating to Bavaria should know that it can be very difficult for them there because uh, the Bavarian population is quite conservative and likes to keep to themselves. In addition, Bavaria is one of the areas with the highest cost of living. But to be honest, I can I can't uh, generally com recommend Germany as an immigration country because, uh, yeah, 
the wages are low, the costs are high, and the German population is now fed up with um, immigration. They don't want any more immigrants because, uh, yeah, even if uh, even if politicians and the press say otherwise, and without special professional qualification as an uh, immigrant in Germany, you have no professional chances anyway. You end up in poverty. Immigrants from Islamic countries find it uh, particularly difficult to gain a foothold there. So, if you're not an IT specialist, doctor, engineer or something, mm, then you almost certainly end up in a completely underpaid job. And what most people don't know either, who emigrate to Germany, they can't have a dual citizenship in Germany. If you want to have a German citizenship here, um, you have to hand in um, your ID from your country of origin. Citizens of countries outside the EU uh, must renounce their previous citizenship in order to obtain German citizenship. However, um, there are some exceptions to this rule. For example, um, there is a special agreement between uh, Germany and the USA. It's a so-called German-American citizen citizenship uh, agreement. So, why I'm making this video? Mm. I want to save you from being disappointed and wasting a lot of money first, of course. I want to save you from fall, uh, yeah, falling into poverty in Germany without being able to visit your family in your home country again. In addition, uh, Germany currently has a lot of problems such as energy crisis, drug shortages, the risk of terrorism, racism, great poverty among the population educational misery in schools and much more. Germany is no longer the Germany it was a few years ago and has changed a lot. Therefore, it's really not a good time to emigrate to Germany at the moment. Believe me, there are currently countries in Europe um, yeah, where it's better than Germany such as the Netherlands, um, Sweden, Denmark, Finland and so on. I ran away from Germany for a very good reason. I hope you found this video helpful and I wish you all the best for the future. With this in mind, I remain with best regards by your Frank.